Good afternoon, everyone. Welcome to the Wide Format Wednesday webinar presented by EFI. My name is uh, Carlos Alberto Muñiz. I am the America's Channel Sales Manager, and I welcome each one of you to this webinar. It is, it is a pleasure to host, host, be your host for today. We are going to talk about a great topic. It's called Great Inks and Great Printers Add Up to Great Profits. How do you can increase your profit potential and expand your application offering? We have several persons that are going to be from our subject matter experts that are going to be presenting today from EFI, including Tiffany Bisson, who's our manager of our Customer Experience Center. Hi, Tiffany. And then we have Mark Mark Goodroll, Goodroll, excuse me, Mark Goodroll, who's our senior Inc. product manager. Lots of lots of years here at EFI, and lots of knowledge to share with us for today. Before we get started. Just want to make sure that we have a lot, we have quite a, quite a bit of callers on the webinar today so on this presentation. So I know there's going to be questions and please feel free to ask any questions during the, during the webinar. Use the WebEx chat feature that you'll see in, in the toolbar. Usually it's in the lower middle or right hand side of your screen. And just go ahead and click on the chat button and ask any, any questions you like during the webinar. And, and when we have an opportunity, we'll, we'll go ahead and answer those questions. So again, I wel we welcome all questions and comments during the webinar. So for the agenda for today, this is our agenda for the webinar for the wide format Wednesday. We're going to be going over the powerhouse of profitability, which is what EFI offers. We'll start out with a with the new exciting EFI Pro 30H, the hybrid printer with EFI Pro Graphics, the UV LED XA inks, which have been very, very popular. We'll then ne next go to soft signage, the fabric with Fabri the FabriView 340i plus do a demo with the, with the water-based dispersed dye inks that we have for that printer. Then we're gonna go and show you the Q5R, our roll to our roll, roll our, the head of the class printer with the EFI Clear and the EFI 3M Superflex XF inks. And then exciting, we're gonna show you inside of our inside of our EFI ink lab. So we'll do a little bit of a tour on the ink lab. So next, I present to you Mark Guterell, who's our Senior Inc. Product Manager. Thank you, Carlos. Can you hear me okay? Can you hear me okay? Yeah, a little louder would be good. Okay. Sorry, technical difficulties. So this slide, the purpose of the slide is to show that there's a, a, a wealth of different product configurations for EFI's display graphics printers. We have wide format printers, which uh, can be flatbed, hybrid, roll to roll. We have our core ViewTech hybrid printers. We have our line of ViewTech roll to roll printers. We have soft signage printers. And then of course there's other, uh, other markets such as the, uh, the, the single pass high speed printers. And so each of these printers can have more than one ink set. And there's a reason you know, that we would have multiple ink sets, different applications have different requirements. We try to make uh, our inks as general purpose as possible, but sometimes there's reasons to have uh, niche products for things such as uh, vehicle graphics, which we'll talk about when we get to the Q5R in a few minutes. But I wanted to show the, the, the breadth of this portfolio is LED cured. We have 3M MCS approved inks in a number of these platforms, which allows customers to do uh, flexible type applications with 3M's warranty standing behind it. We have the Green Guard and Green Guard Gold certifications for the majority of our inks, the, the UV uh, cured inks. This uh, certification uh, is all about indoor air quality. So uh, customers can feel confident that when they're using EFI printed uh, applications indoors, it is not degrading the air quality of their, of their, of their space. And then we do have the line of armor coatings, which uh, we've developed to protect those inks for different uh, applications. These uh, coatings could be flexible, rigid, thermoformable, and they protect the inks from, from weather, from abrasion, from chemicals, et cetera. So we have a really great combination of printers, inks, and coatings for uh, almost every application you can think of. And I, now we're going to go to the 30H and we're going to talk about the high adhesion ink used in this platform. So what we have here, we have uh, corrugated plastic. 
which has always been a challenging material for, for UV inks to stick to. Uh, we have absolutely solved this with our uh, XA ink. And um, so we're going to run a run the sample now. We also have some acrylic on the table. Yep, so like Mark mentioned, um, we uh, spent the, uh, a lot of time and um, a lot of research put into this XA ink set, namely because in a post-print process, you know, printing your piece is, is just one part of the equation. Um, most everything that's printed um, will then in turn need to get um, cut or laminated or mounted to something. And um, a struggle that really everybody in the industry faced, not just DFI, was adhesion to some of the more problematic um, uh, uh, materials being coroplast, like Mark mentioned, non-digital acrylic, some metals, um, some aluminums. Um, so we really focused on improving um, not only how we uh, print to these materials directly, but how they perform in a post-print scenario. So uh, to Mark's point, um, this is printed directly to Coroplast, and we're printing one live now, and we'll go ahead and bend it and scratch at it live for you so you can see, um, you know, hot off the press how it performs. Um, but the, the problem areas with Coroplast was inherently um, cutting it. So when you print to it and then you take it to an offline cutter, you know, a Zun, Kongsberg, Esco, whatever the case may be, the edges would chip and flake. But then also, um, if you made that a very rigid ink set, um, you would lose that bendability or that versatility um, of, you know, coroplast being used as a pole wrap um, in some retail environments. So what we're able to do here, um, what Mark's team was able to do, was create an ink set that was still very flexible, that you could go ahead and bend them and form them around existing structures, but also you could go ahead and cut them um, on, like I said, an offline cutter um, without the worry for chipping those edges or fracturing that relationship of ink to material. Um, Bruce, do we have the smaller uh, pre-cut sample that I can show? Tiffany, there's no, there's no uh, primer in this use. Correct. It's direct. It's direct to substrate. Um, so again, a big, a big benefit there is that, um, especially right now with with today's industry. Um, People, um, having people having um, good qualified help is a challenge. So if we're able to remove the additional process um, of, of a body needing to promote or, or prime a surface before we print to it, we're removing that consumable, that supply chain issue, and also another person that would need to um, prep the board for, uh, for this application. So what we have here is a double-sided sign printed directly to Coroplast. Um, again, contour cut, we have no issues with the performance of the ink. Bendability is still very, 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 very strong. We're not running into any issues of the inks cracking or anything like that on the seams. Um, as promised, you know, hot off the presses, we just watched this one print. Um, again, the Pro 30H um, in the express mode is going to be around 2,400, 2,500 square feet per hour. So this example would be a worst case scenario example of adhesion. It's a very challenging substrate, but also um, running in the express mode, it is the least time under lamp which would inherently give you worst case scenario for adhesion to this product. But you can see we bend it, we can crack that edge, we can scratch at it and immediately take it to a cutter um, if that was our, our next stage application without any concern about the performance of the ink. So really, really key um, application there. Now, given all of its success, Mark, are we only launching this ink set for the 30H or can, can customers have access to this type of really great performance on other platforms? Uh, thank you, Tiffany. So this ink set is available today in the 16H, the 24F, the 30F, and of course now in the 30H. So we have, uh, as I mentioned in the beginning, we have a variety of inks for different platforms. Today this is the only ink available in the, in the 30H, but we will be expanding that to other ink sets, again, because there's a range of applications. But this is the ink that we've launched the printer with, and again, it is available, different set of part numbers for, because it's a different size container, but it's available in the other platforms, wide format platforms. Excellent. Um, and, you know, today, just because, um, you know, we are going to be showing so many different printers and so many different applications, um, we only showed it on the one material, but like I said, we're, we've had really, really great success and really great feedback from customers um, already running it in the field with a, in a wide variety of different types of applications, removing that need um, to pre-treat um, or to, you know, have that concern of having, um, you know, application uh, sustainability uh, in the post-print process. Um, so again, really, really great work by Mark and his team. Um, again, really well received in the field um, across multiple different platforms. Um, today shown on the uh, new 30H hybrid for, um, for the EFI platform. And Mark, so and Mark um, 
Mark and, the, and the ink, the ink again, just to remind everybody, the, the ink that's in this printer is called. It's the Rographics XA LED cured ink. Right. And the XA stands for? High adhesion. I'm sorry. Thank you. No, I just want to make sure because I mean, it, 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 we're going to talk a lot about, like, like Tiffany said, talk about a lot about a lot of inks and different printers. So it's important for them to know that you know, that's what it's called. The XA high adhesion ink. Perfect. Yes. Thank you, Carlos. All right, we're gonna go ahead and step over to the fab review where we're gonna talk water-based inks at completely different technology altogether. Okay. And by the way, this is from our, our customer experience center in New Hampshire, in Londonderry, New Hampshire. So for those customers, that uh, have been there, you know, it's a it's a great facility to be able to do all this testing on applications and on different printers and different inks. Exactly. Um, so, like I mentioned, um, right now you are looking at the brand spanking new, hot to the market um, EFI FabReview 340i Plus. Um, so the uh, the FabReview, um, you know, legacy product uh, comes in a 3.4 meter as well as a 1.8 meter product. Um, and, and what we did is we leveraged um, the successes that we had on both of those platforms um, and created um, really a customer driven product um, where we need to eliminate the excess footprint of an offline calendar. Um, so what we're able to do here and what we're doing, uh, what Greg is doing on the 340i plus is we're printing directly to a frontlit fabric at uh, just under 2000 square feet per hour. And we're using um, the 340i's plus inline dye sublimation solution. So you're printing directly to your textile. You're outgassing and sublimating, really impregnating those fibers um, directly in line in a one step process. Again, talking about the efficiencies of removing extra bodies, the extra step, um, the extra capital investment of needing an offline heat press. Um, and we're able to accomplish all of that in line um, in a wide variety of different products, utilizing Mark and his team's um, water based ink set. So just to add what, to what Tiffany's saying, we always look to maximize the, uh, the ink mileage so you get as much printing as you can out of each liter of ink. Uh, this is a four color machine. It's for both direct and transfer applications. Uh, we have some samples. I don't know if they can be seen, but there are some very rich, robust colors. Uh, the, the ink mileage is, is very, very good with these, with these prints. And unlike a UV ink where this uh, has, is printed and it actually becomes part of the fiber of the material, it can easily be, be printed, sublimated, folded up, and it's very lightweight. It can be packed and shipped extremely easily. Whereas with UV, it's just a totally different application. You would typically roll it or print it and, and ship it flat. It's, uh, whereas the si soft signage, the dye sublimation can just, you know, fold it up, ship it, and then stretch it out, tension it, and it's ready for display. Um, we've spent a lot of time making sure that uh, we had the uh, front lit and back lit and color density that we need to, uh, to maximize the efficiency and the applications for soft signage. Yeah, and a lot of that technology was leveraged um, by really looking at what, are, what is our what is the customer base need to make this a truly inline process. And there were two very specific applications that we needed to address when coming out with the 340i plus, and that was inline backlit, getting that really heavy, heavy, dense coverage of ink um, directly to the fabric, and being able to outgas all of that water when you're putting so much um, ink down in, in one application on the fabrics. Um, our our previous challenge. Was was making sure to, to sufficiently outgas, putting down as much ink as we needed to, for that backlit application, but being able to sufficiently outgas so that there wasn't any crocking or anything like that. Um, the second application that we really put a lot of energy into was the flag-based application. Um, the sample that we were just holding up is a, is a flag uh, you know, that you would see outside of a retail store that needs to be able to be printed on one side but bleed through completely um, you know, as much as possible so that you can see it from both sides as you're driving by. Um, so we were able to leverage um, the Kyocera print head, which we're using here. Um, we doubled up on the number of those Kyocera print heads, um, increasing our resolution um, twofold. So we were able to, at that point, leverage the high resolution and the um, physical amount of print heads that we were putting down um, to, to get that ink capacity in line. 
Coupling that with changing um, how we're actually outgassing um, in the inline drying process, um, we are able to now really achieve um, at a very, very high level of quality and a high speed, um, achieve those backlets and flag applications that our customers were telling us, um, you know, we were historically lacking in. Just to touch on your comment about the print heads. So we have different print heads and different printers for different reasons. As the applications vary, as the ink sets vary for the applications, we tune the uh, the systems together using the best print head for the application. So we have some systems with Seiko heads, some with Rico heads, this one with the Kia Sarah heads. And again, it's all about what is the what is the uh, primary intent of that configuration. Yeah, and to dovetail onto that, Mark, that's a really great point. Um, a really key differentiating factor for EFI, um, you know, competitively speaking, is, you know, you heard us talk about a, a being able to quickly and efficiently transition to focus on uh, coroplast and non-digital acrylics with the XA inks. Because our ink team is under the same roof as, you know, uh, training and engineering and R&D, um, they're able to really quickly and efficiently and holistically understand what the inks need to be able to do, um, specific to different print heads to different print speeds, different cure technology. You know, is it arc cure? Is it LED cure? Um, you know, how fast are we going? How many print heads are there? Um, so we're, EFI as a, as a whole is much, much more um, efficient and effective in, you know, making moves, creating new ink sets based on what the market feedback is. Um, again, uh, uh, because we're, we're down to grinding our own pigments, really, um, controlling the quality of that ink, um, we can make, more efficient, more effective tweaks to that chemistry to be able to perform um, in, in products. And, and you have your own testing lab, correct? We do, and we'll, we will be showing that at the end of this session. So we do have ink development both here in New Hampshire, in the United States. We have another uh, development lab in Kansas City. We also do development in other parts of the world, in the UK and in Italy and, and elsewhere. So we have a, kind of a best of breed uh, philosophy at EFI where the ink development team works closely with engineering, with applications, with service. We get that customer feedback and we use the, uh, the combination of, of all these things to come up with the, uh, the, the printer and ink that works best for the application. Very well put. Um, so that was, um, you know, XA for extended adhesion, um, water base for inline dye sublimation for fabric. And next we're going to be looking at a brand new product that I know I personally am a huge fan of, nothing but great feedback um, on, on a, a new ink that we've developed. Um, so we're going to hop over to the ViewTech uh, Q5R, which is our five meter roll to roll solution. All right, so what you are looking at here is the Q5R. Um, so the amazing technology, and I'll let Mark speak to it uh, technically, but what my team and I and our customers have absolutely fallen in love with is the ability to print not only white ink, but clear ink, not one instead of the other, in line, very high quality, very high rate of speed. Historically, it was one or the other, um, both with us and the, the other roll-to-roll -roll comp uh, competitors. Um, you had to choose white or you had to choose clear. What we have here now is an additional available two print heads, so you can still run uh, four print heads to, uh, per channel of your white ink, that, that proven super white, super neutral, um, really opaque white ink, in line with clear. And Mark, can you tell us what's so spectacular about this clear other than it's absolutely gorgeous? So this is the first clear that we've brought to the market. That's jettable. It's jettable and protective. So we have, we've had decorative clears for, for years, uh, but it didn't add any protective properties to the ink. So now uh, in working with our Kansas City US Development Center, uh, which they're the folks that developed our, our line of armor coatings. They took the armor coating technology and they found a way to make elements of that jettable, which was a breakthrough for us. And, and uh, so now we can have, as Tiffany was saying, color, white and clear all together. And the clear, in addition to being decorative, also adds protection. Oops, we have some examples here. 
So this this example is a uh, is a truck side material. So in a lot of in a lot of the world, flexible truck sides, the accordion style, are very popular. So you would need to have an application or a, or an ink that could withstand the accordion of opening and closing the side of the truck constantly, the road grime, the weather, the sun, etc., chemicals. So this is a, an inline process where we printed on on this particular material. It's some kind of heavy duty vinyl. Um, the, the white underneath, the color over that, and then the clear on top of that, which is protecting this as a, as a total package for that application as just one example. As one example, yeah. And, and this process, um, specifically for the truck side curtains, they used to have to not only be able to print the white and the color onto that colored vinyl and get that good op opacity, but then they would need to take these huge panels, have the floor space within their facility to roll them out, and mop on that protective clear. So that's a that's floor space, that's real estate, that's a body, that's another consumable. Um, then they all, of course, need to get dried and then installed. So what we're doing here in line, utilizing all kinds of bells and whistles on the Q series, is printing that white, printing that clear in line. So you don't you remove that 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 body to apply it. You remove the real estate needed to lay them out to mop it on. But we also have in line slitting and cutting. So now we're going from three meter rolls, five meter rolls down to a completely finished product in line, removing all of that extra peripheral um, application need. And in what, do you wanna talk a little bit about what, um, you know, the longevity of the inks of, the, of that clear ink and what, uh, what extra it's providing? Yeah, absolutely. And, and just to finish what you were saying, this, in this example, it's showing in the illustration, going from a three hour multi-step process to 46 minutes to accomplish the same end finished product. So it's a huge efficiency gain in addition to the development of you know, this protective capability. And, and I will also mention this machine has two different ink sets, uh, the Super Range XF and the Super Flex F -F XF. And the reason that we have two, they're both 3M MCS approved, but the Super Flex ink is designed for vehicle wraps. So it is the, the most stretchy UV cured ink that has honestly ever been created by anyone. And it is uh, perfectly suited and warranted by 3M for up to seven years for vehicle wraps. So that by itself speaks to the uh, durability and longevity of the inks. The Super Range is, is not as soft, which means it's not as pliable, but it's suited to a wider range of applications, thus the two names. Uh, we have a large install base around the world using either of the two ink sets. And again, it's always application specific. What is your primary application? And also, um, you know, we're talking about truck side curtain. Um, you know, what if you're what if you're not doing truck side curtain? Um, you know, what are some of the real world applications? What are some of the real world applications? Um, that would be uh, the potential elimination or um, reducing how much offline lamination that needs to happen to these. Um, you know, if you're in the banner space, um, you know, if you're more traditional display graphics, um, that would be the the potential elimination of lamination, which again is a secondary process. It's another um, uh, piece of material that you need to stock in inventory and and, and another step, another piece of equipment. So um, the potential removal of all of that um, obviously is, is very enticing. Um, some other examples that I wanted to talk about really quickly um, that my team gets really excited about is when you're utilizing the clear ink um, as a strictly aesthetic solution, maybe you don't need protection, you just wanna make something pretty. Um, it can be used as a shape uh, clear. So we've got a matte in the background and then we've got um, what we, what's actually our matte clear. So the matte clear, um, if, you, if you don't need a, a, a high gloss solution, um, you can matte it down a little bit. Um, in line doesn't change anything. Um, and then when you're applying that clear to a clear substrate or to um, a, a, a metallic substrate, it actually fills in um, the jetted dome area um, of your matte piece. And it makes whatever material you're printing to completely translucent. So aesthetically, if you, if you have a really creative house, if you're doing a lot of POP, um, you know, or, or, you know, wall graphics, window graphics, things like that, that clear ink can completely change the application. Whereas um, the ink just jetted is, is mostly matte. Um, you can make it completely translucent, almost like a stained glass effect um, and, and really take on uh, the, the, the visual of whatever material it is you're printing on. So awesome, awesome, awesome product. Like I said, you know, we, we show it off as often as we can, um, whether it's needed or not, um, because it is such a great story and it really does solve for a lot of different types of applications.
All right, so we're gonna switch over to um, Aaron in the Ink Lab. Um, Aaron, do you wanna do a quick introduction? Sure, I just wanna welcome everyone to Hampshire Ink Development Lab right behind me. Uh, we are one of the three major ink development labs here in the United States for EFI. Uh, and we formulate every ink that goes into every EFI printer. Now, ink formulation and EFI means integration. So we work directly with our engineering team, application team, as well as our customer sales and marketing in order to provide the best solutions across all of our platforms. Now, some of the uh, platforms we focus on here in New Hampshire are the wide format series printers. So that is the 16H, 24F, 30F, and the 30H. The GS and H series printers, as well as the Q series and EFI's new XT series printers. Thank you, Mark, for joining. Uh, ink development EFI is uh, also working with customers. So we receive uh, invaluable feedback from our customers once we launch ink, that we take that feedback and we develop new test methods in order to drive further development. Uh, some of the testing that we do here, uh, but not, not limited to, is things like adhesion, things like weathering, uh, to prove out that we have the best in class pigments that we use in our printers. Uh, they are automotive grade. We also do uh, flexibility testing, chemical resistance, and water resistance testing. And so over the years, we have expanded and further refined our testing so that all of our inks across all of our platforms deliver the highest performance to our customers. Uh, so one of our latest examples of the integrated develop is the Transform TF inks that was developed by also our Kansas City team. Uh, so that is a one-stop solution for all your LED transforming needs. Um, that is planned to be launched into the 32H, the 30F, and the H-series printers. So Mark has a sample right here in his hands, and so that's actually an eight-inch draw right on uh, Lexan. But we're not limited to just clear media. We can also do that thermal pouring process on white media, like styrene, do the same type of performance. And we also can do three-layer, two-sided printing thermoforming. So you're not limited to just one side of your print. You can have two separate images and thermoform right onto the media. So just to add to what Aaron's saying here, so I've already mentioned the Kansas City team a number of times. They're the ones that brought this original thermoforming capability to EFI. We started with, uh, with mercury art cured inks, um, and that has evolved into what we are now about. We are on the verge of, of commercializing LED cured thermoformable inks. Mm -hmm. uh, you may have already mentioned it in the Pro 30F, in the 32, the Vutec 32H, and in the uh, Vutec H series, H3, H5. And do you know which ones those were printed on? It could have been any of them, right? So this was, I believe, the 32H okay. right here. So same ink, different printers for different speeds and capabilities. Do we have a uh, Mark? Do we? Do we, okay. Yeah. Yep. Mark, Mark, real quick, quick question. I mean, do we uh, do we have any idea of commercialization on on that new ink, this the Transform TF ink? Do you know? Do you think when uh, when customers can start sampling? This year. <laughs> I'm sorry to be so vague, but uh, you know, I, I'm every I have every confidence that we will be commercialized by the end of this year, but. There's three different platforms we're working to get, uh, you know, finishing up our qualifications. We've got some beta sites that we're queuing up. Um, you know, obviously some of the uh, some of the steps are out of our control when we're going to beta sites, but we are working to expedite that and get us to commercialization by the end of the year. So it's in process. In process. Yeah. Sounds good. Thank you, Carla. And to sort of touch on, um, you know, the complexity. Let's, um, you know, we talked about three different platforms. Um, all the different speeds, uh, two different print heads, um, you know, several different materials and different types of applications. Um, and all with that, you know, per platform, we're looking at color, um, you know, vibrancy, density, saturation. We're looking at, um, you know, testing for outdoor durability. We do wash cycles. We do freeze cycles. We do all kinds of additional testing. Do you guys want to sort of uh, take us on a little show and tell of, um, of the testing area that you guys have? Certainly. So it Aaron may have already touched on this, but we're in the same building with engineering, with service, with applications. So the fact that we can uh, call upon those areas of knowledge as we're in the development process is, is, is very important to our 
range of applications. Yep, so we do the formulations in this lab right here, and we can immediately take that and move into, uh, behind us, the printer development lab, so that we can actually take those ink formulations, look at a printer, uh, gather valuable feedback, perform the testing, then come back right in here, same people working together every day to do uh, ink development. And in addition to the machines we'll see, are we, are we going yep, now? Yep, you go ahead. In addition to the machines, we also do wrap of containing. We use the machines in engineering and in training and in other places as well. We're just taking a quick walk across the hall here, so give us just a moment to get there. All right, right here, you see one of our light boxes. And so right uh, here, we can look for a color chip to make sure that the, the, the color you see when you first print that image is the same you see within a week. And then behind it, you can also see our weatherometers to make sure that same color and vibrancy you see now is the same you'll see in years to come. Yeah, that's a great point, Aaron. Uh, obviously, the, the, the first day something's printed, but then we want to make sure that different applications in different regions of the world hold up you know, for you know, months, years, et cetera, as it depends on what the application is. And just a reminder here as well, we test the inks by themselves, but we also have the armor coatings, and there's, of course, aftermarket uh, laminates and other things that, that complement and add further levels of durability. So right behind me, right here, we actually have some of the ovens we test our inks in. And so we do accelerated uh, stability testing to make sure that the inks on the shelves actually last uh, years to come as well. So really we shoot for about 12 to 18 months of stability uh, so that you know when things are shipped across the seas, they can maintain their shelf life when they get to you for nine to 12 months. And Mark, we had touched on briefly um, armor coatings. What are some of the other test parameters or, or chemistry builds that we use for the armor coating, different applications? Yeah, so we have a water-based coating, and then we have coatings that are uh, that are UV cured in a uh, in a in a um, UV coating machine. So we have a, a rigid, we have a flexible, and then we also have a thermoformable. So the applications that we were showing just a minute ago in the formulation lab, those those products, if they're not being used second surface, can be uh, treated with a thermoformable coating. Let's say you're doing a, a all-terrain vehicle and you're protecting that um, camouflage um, graphic that's on the, on the ATV, you can use an armor, thermoformable armor coating to protect that ink in that application. So really, really you know, robust across the platform, as well as different applications and, and things of that nature. So we really do have internally, holistically, a, a really great solution for, for material, for printer, you know, for application, pre-treatment, post-treatment, all of the above. In fact, there's uh, product brochures and data sheets on EFI.com. If you go to EFI.com and click on the products, you'll find inks and coatings. And then there's the information about all the different range of armor coatings. We have anti-graffiti. We have coatings that are used for floor graphics, et cetera. So we're only touching on the, on the tip of the iceberg here. So I believe next up is Q&A. We certainly um, threw a lot of information at you. I'm going to kick it back over to the Ink Lab, and we'll take the Q&A in the Ink Lab. Actually, we're going to take a, we're going to take you on a, a quick tour of what we actually have available um, for testing equipment in the ink lab. Oops. On my right, right here, we have an H5. So this is uh, one of the printers we'll be testing the thermoforming ink on that we have in the past to prove out its performance. On my left, right here, is an HS125. And so we do a lot of development work still on there, uh, looking further ahead into that platform's uh, legacy printers. Uh, <laughs> if we step back over this way as well, 
Right here, we have a 30F that's being brought up, and we'll be doing some additional ink testing there as well. On my left over here is our GS3250 arc lamp printer. That is actually the machine that we used in order to do a lot of the uh, initial sampling for the thermoforming inks as well. So it's not just LED. It can also be used for the GS3250 arc lamp. Uh, behind it, we see some of our additional GS printers, including our LX3 and Pro32H. So right in this room right here, we can take pretty much any of our printers in EFI, we can mimic that here. And so we can take new ink development in the lab, and within a day or two, we can be on a printer here, testing it and seeing initial results. And so we gain that feedback and that, that continuous improvement process that we can achieve here that really drives our innovation. And in addition to what we have in the room, as mentioned, we have engineering assets, training assets. We call upon the people in, in, applica in applications and service to also uh, you know, qualify and, and prove certain developments. So it's an impressive ar arrangement of, of resources. Yeah, so, so question. For Q &A. Yeah, so, so a question for, uh, for, for Tiffany or for Mark. So if you have a, you have a, a, a prospect or a customer who is looking to, um, who's got an application, doesn't know which, which printer, which ink to, um, you know, to, to, to go to look at, to, to, um, you know, from a recommendation, what would you, what would you recommend to them when, when they're looking at specifically when talking about ink? What are we what are we looking at from a perspective of what are the things that That's they need my to favorite, my favorite kind of question carlos um so my team and i um on the application side um in the same building as as mark and aaron and their teams um we do all of the samples and demos for um pre-sales activities so um my team and i were a very technical liaison uh, available to all of our customers um and and the idea there is that um you know you come to us with an application um, and we help you solve for that application with um, different printer availability as well as access to um, different ink sets uh, right in the demonstration center so you could work with your local um, dealer or your local uh, EFI direct sales rep. Um, send us your, your physical material. Send us a, a target of what it is that you're achieving. Um, and, and we can put together um, a, the right combination for what it is um, your application needs are, your throughput needs are, um, and, and of course, you know, price range. So we can, my team and I, um, we have access to all kinds of equipment, just like Aaron showed you. Um, you know, you saw three today. Um, I've got about a dozen um, that I have access to. So uh, utilize your local uh, channel or direct sales reps, and my team and I are happy to help work through what that solution looks like for you. And just to comment on that, so sampling and demo demonstration is absolutely key to finding the right combination. Uh, we have, uh, as, as obviously has been demonstrated, we have a wide range of printers and inks, different capabilities, and there is an extremely good chance we have the right combination for your for your primary applications. Yeah, which is which is, which which goes into you know when we get when we get asked by customers or by prospects, <clears throat> they say, well, you know, I'm I'm interested in this printer. We'll start asking questions about you know what what exactly we wanted we're trying to do from an application point of view, from a from you know from a productivity point of view. And from a cost point of view too, right? So from a budget point of view, because we can offer different printers, and and that's why you know that's important to so we to get that that information up front. Hey, on the on the Q5R, I know you, you mentioned you showed the 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 clear ink, the Dura clear ink. Is it is it offered in any other printers at this time? Today, no, it's just in the roll to roll. But like most developments at EFI, when we find something that's working really well in one platform we then start to work to extend it to others. So I would, I would, uh, I have a strong suspicion we will see that ultra clear coat product appear in other platforms uh, in the, in the near future. Okay, excellent. I certainly hope so. <laughs> Mark, uh, maybe you can comment a little bit. You mentioned about, you know, we, the, our capabilities of developing ink. Um, talk a little bit about the sourcing, because, you know, as you know, sourcing right now is a big headache for, for all companies. In all types, for the media, for 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 parts, for ink, how how is the how is EFI, you know, meeting that challenge these days when it comes to supplying ink to their customers worldwide? That's a great question, Carlos. Thank you. So EFI manufactures ink in Ypsilanti, Michigan, in the U.S., but we also have an ink plant in the U.K. Uh, we have other ink developments in other parts of the world. We generally have second sources of every raw material, so that you know we are able to leverage. Um, 
multiple sources. If one is having a supply chain issue, we can, we can source from another. So again, we've got redundancy. We have uh, kind of distributed manufacturing. And uh, you know, if, if, one, if the UK plant, for example, can't develop something, or excuse me, manufacture an ink, then we can source it from the US and vice versa. So uh, that's, that's how we've stayed in front of this uh, you know, global supply chain issue that we've, we've been seeing. Absolutely. And, I'm, and then I'll put a little plug into since I manage the channels, the, we have our a worldwide, you know, network of distributors, who are also very willing to, you know, to be able to, to supply customers on their on their needs, doing any type of even, you know, even inventory and in, in you know, on site, um, and programs like that, which, uh, which, which our distributors are very able, uh, re, re, very willing and capable of doing. Okay. And just to add to Mark's comments about second sourcing, every material that's second sourced into an EFI ink is rigorously tested to ensure it has the same performance and stability as the original uh, manufacturer. So that every material, every batch of inks you get is exactly the same, and that we have we have never put a material into an ink that has not been tested and fully tested through here for application needs as well as for making sure that you can use the ink in the same uh, lifespan as the typical uh, sources for the raw material. And then maybe, Mark, maybe you can talk a little bit about what, what um, if, if there is apparent, if there's an apparent issue in the field, for example, something that, that you know, whether it be ink related or, or equipment related, how, what the, some of the things that VFI does, I, when I've, been, I've been in EFI for three years and I'm amazed at what some of the stuff that we do when it comes to ink, especially with the, 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 what, what uh, Aaron just talked about, you know, the making sure that the batches are consistent. So can you talk a little bit about that process? How, do, how does that work? Yeah, so the manufacturing facilities have uh, quality teams and the quality teams keep retains from each batch. And so if there is an issue in the field and it can't be um, determined if it's the ink or the hardware or some combination of things, we will open what's called an ink service request, which is a, which is a service case specific to ink. It goes back to the quality team. They pull the retains. They look at, uh, has, there, has there been something about that particular batch that's caused an issue? Uh, they'll look if there's been any other reports from that same batch from, from other customers. They have a full analytical lab, which maybe Aaron can speak to, uh, where they can assess, you know, the uh, the degradation over time. You know, there is a there is a shelf life on the inks. It's typically 12 to 15 months. Um, so things can change. If it was shipped across the ocean and it was subjected to a lot of heat and transit, you know, you never know if there could have been something that caused something to go uh, differently than expected in that batch. So we have a full process to to uh, identify, investigate and uh, find root cause. And then of course, if there is proven to be an ink issue, we of course take responsibility for it and correct that. As, as Mark was saying, our analytical team is in house. They will take a look at when uh, batches come in and they can run a wide range of analytical testing on them, not limited to FTIR, GP mass spec. So we're really able to determine the actual root cause of any issues that are arising in the field so that those issues are addressed and we make sure we note that in future formulations. So we really can drive formulation, not only from a customer experience, what we see here, but when we have analytical uh, giving us insights as well, we integrate all of that into the new ink developments, as well as when we take a look at, uh, let's say legacy platforms, we wanna move things into those as well, uh, kind of backwards compatibility. We make sure we test there, but we also make sure that we are taking those improvements we have learned from analytical testing and things like that, and we improve the inks in an analytical sense as well. Excellent. And, and you know, so Mark, I mean, one of the points you bring up to me, uh, you know, we, so our customers, our prospects know that we're, we're a top printer manufacturer, but they're not really, they don't really know that we're really a top ink manufacturer too, right? When it comes to not only right. for the many years that we've been in the business, but also from a volume perspective. Absolutely. We're one of the top digital UV ink manufacturers in the world. And of course, we don't only make digital UV and, and I represent the display graphics side of the business, but we also have the industrial textile, the building materials and, and other other areas. Um, so EFI as a whole has a, a very significant amount of resources on the ink side of the business. Absolutely. Well, great. I think I got all the questions uh, answered. I don't know if you have any other comments or final final observations that you would like to share. 
No, just, you know, a quick comment on just, you know, our, our accessibility. Um, you know, we're here for you um, on the on the ink side, the manufacturing side, the software side. So holistically, it's a, a one-stop shop, not to downplay all of the technology and, and energy that we have in the business. Um, but certainly utilize us, um, you know, you, utilize the channel, your directs. Um, you know, my team, again, always here, happy to help to, to sort of string together the dots um, that will help grow your future businesses. Absolutely. And, you know, and then, and then as we know, that's the, what the whole webinar has been about, ink is a differentiator. And with the combination of a printer really can make a big difference to a customer and especially with those applications to, to be really profitable and, and really productive with them. So awesome. So I'm going to, I'm going to go ahead and share um, some information, some last, some last, some uh, information here on contacts. So if you need to, if you'd like to contact one of the one of the uh, presenters for today, here's the information for Tiffany, her email for Mark Goodroll, and for myself. So feel free to contact us. And I'd like to go ahead and and announce what our next webinar, our, our webinar for August 17th is going to be. Our wide format Wednesday webinar is going to present the new EFI UTIC XT super high speed printer. So this is going to be a great great uh, webinar presenting our, our, our fastest uh, printer. You're going to be able to see a, a note, we're going to be given an overview of the print of the platform from our product manager, Sean Roberts, see a live in depth demo of the platform. Look at the automation, the media hold down, the transport, the transport and printing sheets at very super high speeds. And then also you're going to get a chance to talk to one of our early adopter customers, Adam Ingram from the president of Ingram Ex express services, who has uh, chosen to, to, to buy and purchase a view a view tech XT to accelerate their business growth. So don't miss it. You'll be you'll get a registration link and an invite to see the new EFI View Tech XP super high speed printer. From uh, from EFI, from Tiffany, from Mark, from 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 Aaron and myself, we want to thank you for attending this webinar for today. And we hope you have a very wonderful day. Thank you. Bye. Thank you, everyone. Thank you, everyone.